Hello and welcome to my Spiffbo 9 reading vlog. If you don't know what Spiffbo is, it is a self-published fantasy blog off, which is a competition hosted every single year by Mark Lawrence that I somehow roped my way into and got them all to say yes to having me as a judge and I'm so excited that they did and I'm very, very excited to bring you this video. I've been having so much fun with this process. I've been loving following along the competition. I followed it along last year and it's just such an incredible volunteered competition that I really, really enjoy. I do have a video on my channel all about what Spiffbo is and I can link that down below, but for those of you who are just coming to this vlog like what the world is going on, here is a rundown. <laughs> in Spiffbo we have 300 books entered into this competition and we have 10 blogs who read and review fantasy. Each blog is then allocated 30 books out of that 300 books and they are told to whittle that 30 books down to one finalist however you want. Lots of blogs including me We'll do semi-finalists and then we will get a finalist out of our semi-finalists. There isn't a lot of rules and restrictions to how you do this besides that like you're getting it down to one book and you're supposed to at least try every single book. And then after we have the one finalist of each blog, all 10 blogs will read each other's finalists and we will write them and there will be a winning book at the end of this. For my blog, covers with Cassidy, I ended up having six people join my team underneath of me and they all read 10 books. And yes, I only have 30 books. I realized that that math isn't mathing. However, I wanted every book to be read by two people so that it had a second chance just due to like, I know our taste really does matter in books and stuff. So I just wanted to give a book an extra chance for that reason. And then each of my six lovely team members gave me a semi-finalist. I will be reading those in this video for you and then picking my finalist for the competition. I just wanted to say a huge big thank you to everyone under my team. I do have a playlist on my channel that has any of their videos, but some of them did post their reviews on Bookstagram or their book blogs. So thank you so much to Deb, Rachel, Mel, Kaylee, Bree, and Sandra for doing this. I set out to, I'm gonna cry. Why am I crying? This is stupid. Okay. <laughs> When I said yes to this, I knew you all would say yes as well. And I just want to thank you all for just like going along with everything I get myself into and every idea that I have. Everyone in my group also did Spiff Casties version last year. If you didn't know, I like ran a little competition alongside the official competition that was not official. And I told them all they couldn't DNF books and it was a whole, whole thing. And they all graciously said yes to me and have always said yes to anything that I throw their way. And I knew that they would all be incredible reviewers for this competition. I'm crying. Don't, don't laugh at me, I'm an emotional mess. I know a lot of you were new to indie and I just threw these wild ideas on you of like, let's read indie books. And thank you so much for helping the world see that indie books can be incredible. And I truly do think our group of semi-finalists really shine in what indie fantasy can do. So thank you so much for reviewing these books and being incredible. I knew I wanted people who would be truthful and who would give me the best books and not worry about like taste and things like that. And I truly think all of you brought something new and unique to this competition. So thank you so much for doing this with me. If you don't already subscribe to their channels, follow their book blogs, you should. Rachel also has a podcast called Fantasy Book of the Month that you should definitely go check out. Um, and then Deb has a book blog. The rest of them are all booktubers here on YouTube. So definitely please go check them out. I will leave links to everything in the description bar below. They are incredible people. Also an extra thank you to Mark Lawrence for having me be a part of this. And now let's get into reading these semi-finalists because I have five incredible books in front of me. I'm just going to show them up uh, and you will hear more about these books as I go. But my five semi-finalists are Master of the Void by Rend Waven. This was picked to me by both Sandra and Deb who both read it in their allocations of 10 books and thought that this was the best book of their bunch, so they both picked it for a semi-finalist. Blood of the Lion by C.D. McKenna. Mel from Eleanor Reads picked this for me. I'm so excited to get to it. Pawn's Gambit by Rob J. Hayes. Rachel picked this for me, but I also know Mel loved it and it was in her allocation as well. The Sword of Mercy and Wrath by N.C. Kousis, who Kaylee picked for me, but I also know that Brie loved it as it was in her allocation as well. And The Fires of Time by Alexander Wyatt, which Brie picked for me. And I do know that Kaylee enjoyed it as well. Literally all of these books, we were fighting to, t to like figure out which one people were gonna announce because everybody loved so many books in our groups and it was an incredible time. So let's just get right into reading and then I will pick my finalist at the end. Okay, I have started Pawn's Gambit and I am really enjoying it. I think that this is actually such a unique story. This is a story where we're following a world where every hundreds of years, the gods battle to be who will be the ruling god of heaven. 
and they kind of control what happens. So there's a bunch of different gods. We have the god of war, we have the god of fire, we have the god of lost things, we have the god of water. Like there are so many different gods and every century or so they get to put themselves into this competition and the winner ends up the next god of heaven. So that's what's happening right now. We're having a god competition, but it's not the gods competing. It is the humans competing. Each god picks a champion to do this competition for them. So we're following our main character who has been chosen as a champion for a god who then has to go do this tournament. It's kind of a game of hide and seek and capture the flag mixed together because there's multiple flags essentially and they're hiding and you must seek them. But there's more rules more typical to like capture the flag and I really really like it. I also really enjoy the Japanese influence in here. I do watch a lot of anime so I know a lot of the terms being thrown around but I do think it could be hard if you don't know those terms because they're not always well explained although lots of them also are. So there's just that. So far it does not feel like a sequel at all which is good. I've been told a million times that these Rita standalones even though it's like one, two, and three. Sometimes I don't trust that. So far so good. It's definitely a standalone in my opinion and it has me excited to read the rest of the series of standalones. I'm not far in but I just wanted to give you a little update on my first initial thoughts. I feel like I'm just like disappearing into the darkness. I am about 50% into this. I'm on chapter 20, so made a good dent. I think a little over 50%. And I honestly don't have much to say that I haven't already said. I think going up against Hayes in this competition is so terrifying for other authors. Like, at least in my opinion, it would be. Like, I would be so scared to go up against Rob J. Hayes because we've seen him do so good in this competition time and time again. And there's a reason for that because he writes really creative stories and his writing is just like really good. Like his prose is excellent. And that's just like really hard to compete with in general because he feels like a seasoned author and he is a seasoned author. I am going into this and want to remind everyone that I am basing this only on the book and not everything else I know about him. This book though, you can tell that he's a seasoned writer. Like his writing is the best I've seen it from him. I still complained about his writing in other books. I know I'm gonna say like I'm only judging on this book but I probably will talk about other books just because it's the easiest way for me to relate to things. So like in The War Eternals, I complained about how repetitive the writing style was like quite often. In this though, like it is technically written so dang well that I can't complain about much. It's also such a unique story. I haven't seen a story like this before that I am really enjoying. We're going from like point A to point B to point C to point D and we're going through these like mind games or battles trying to like find uh, this piece for the scavenger hunt. Even though we're on like one big plot, one big arc, each little moment feels like its own little adventure. And I'm really enjoying that. I will say I'm not connecting to the characters as much as I wanted to. I want to like love and root for my characters and I instead kind of feel like an observer. Like I'm just like watching it happen, but I'm not like in the head of the main character. Like, yes, oh my God, please do that. Don't do that. Oh my God, you're so stupid. Instead, I'm just kind of like watching it happen. Interested to see the outcomes, but not invested in the outcomes. So that is my one complaint, but overall I'm having a really good time with this. I'm flying through the audiobook. I'm really enjoying it. And I think that this is a beast in the competition. So I probably shouldn't have read this one first, but here we are. Those are my middle thoughts on Pond's Gambit and I will update you at the end. I finished Pond's Gambit and I really enjoyed this. This is a beast to beat, I'm not gonna lie. This is going to be a tough book to beat and I read it first. It is just written so dang well. Like, I think that the writing feels so polished in this. I will say as the story went on, I did feel like it got a little repetitive, but not enough to bother me. And I still felt like it was like meant to be repetitive. So I feel like that's okay in my opinion. And it wasn't like overly repetitive, that makes sense. I really liked the world in this. I thought it was so vivid and rich and the world building was really cool. And I feel like I felt like the world was real. Like I feel like I could exist in this world. I mean, yes, it is earth, but there are parts of it that aren't like my own earth or like my personal beliefs of earth. And I think that this made me believe what these characters believe, which I thought was really fun. And 
I also really did enjoy the plot of this. I will say like most times I want a more grander scale plot. I like my epic plots. I like plots that span books. I really struggle with standalone books actually because of that because their plot tends to be a little bit more small scale than I personally enjoy. However, I feel like this plot was really well done. It kept me intrigued. I really like how it wrapped up and I didn't feel like it needed to be bigger than it was but I still enjoyed my time with a small scale plot like this because although small scale it felt large scale in some ways but it was like summed up really nicely. I think my biggest issue with this is probably just the characters. I do feel like I struggled a little bit to connect to the characters. I ended up giving this book a four star and I truly think it could have been a five star if I just connected a little bit more to the characters but at the same time I still feel like the characters were well thought out and well planned. I feel like I can see the characters out in front of me. Like I could go meet these characters in real life and completely understand them. I understood their motives and their wants and their dislikes and all of those things. I just like didn't connect to the character. Like I wasn't necessarily like rooting for her the same way I root for some other characters. So that's like kind of my like biggest negative of the story and like did take away a little bit from my enjoyment because I prefer a story where I like really dial in on the characters and I'm like oh my god these are the best characters ever I absolutely love and adore you and I didn't have that feeling with this book but I loved everything else about it and I felt it was really unique. I will say like the only other thing I think I kind of had an issue with was the mortal techniques which is a mortal technique story. I kind of wish they were a little bit more explained and this could be because this technically is a second book in the world series but this also could be just because I prefer to understand my magic systems a little bit more than this book does. You understand them, they are explained. I think they're explained enough for this to 100% count as a standalone but I just like wanted to know more information about them and I think that's me as a reader not the author having this as a companion book. Like I don't think that if I had read Never Die before this I would understand this better than I did. I think I just wanted more than what is actually given to you. Which is okay. I just am more of a here are the rules, these are how exactly they work kind of reader in my magic systems than this is. Which is 100% okay and I know that's a me thing and I'm not really docking the book for it as much. That kind of went in a little bit into my enjoyment but like I, I think that this is so cool and so unique and I really had a really good time with this. So yeah, I think that this is going to be a beast of a book to beat. Now I am going to give you my official scoring in all the categories because I have them. However, I'm going to put a little warning thingy that I might not pick the book that has the highest score. I'm going to pick the book I think that I liked the most and sometimes you can get a higher score but my enjoyment was lower. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I use a rubric that I created myself. It's a weighted writing system and enjoyment is rated a little bit higher and I also have a rubric that I follow. I have a video all about the weighted writing system on my channel, so let's go over what ratings I gave this. I gave the characters an 8, I gave the plot a 9, I gave the writing a 9, I gave the setting a 10, and I gave my enjoyment an 8, which ended up at an 8.67 and a 4 star rating. I don't know yet if I'm rounding to 8.5 or 9 for a spiff bow score because they don't use like the point blank blanks. So I'll have to decide if I'm rounding to a 9 or an 8.5. If I'm rounding up or if I'm actually using rounding rules. That's my first book done. Now it's time to move on to my next book. Hello, I've made it to page 150 of The Blood of the Lion. I am actually really enjoying this one. This is like your classic epic fantasy style story. Like when you're thinking like grander scope, this is that kind of story. So it reminds me of like the Wheel of Time and Stormlight Archive. Even in some ways like John Gwynn's writing that feels just like so epic in scope. I think that this is a nine book series too. It also I think then has that like wordy feel that epic fantasy tends to have. So like Brandon Sanderson or Robert Jordan or John Gwynn, they tend to be wordy authors and this is also wordy. Like for example, this isn't a spoiler but I am going to read you like a little passage just to show you like how wordy the writing can be and if this bothers you this could not be the book for you. It's not bothering me and I typically don't like wordy writing but I am noticing it. The other three rooms were bedrooms with fresh sheets. They were all siblings, the beds and blue sheets identical as well as the old dresser that looked antique. The dark wood floors were covered in large plush red rugs that gave her a sense of warmth when she pressed her toes into them. 
It made her want to crawl underneath the sheets and open a book. So much of that passage, in my opinion, is unnecessary besides just like set the scene a little bit and it's a little bit too wordy for my personal liking in fantasy books. However, I think that it reminds me of like epic fantasy and just like the scale of them and I think part of that, I mean, it's a chunky book and there's a reason for it. It's because of the extra words in it. I am enjoying this. I just wanted to like state that it is wordy and like showcase that because if that does bother you, maybe this won't be the book for you, but I, I do not like wordy normally, but sometimes it can work for me and it is working for me in this because I think the story is interesting enough. At 150 pages, I wish I could tell you what this was about, but as I said, I think it's going to be the epic scope, epic fantasy, and 150 is not enough pages to tell you what it's completely about. We do follow three characters in this. I prefer two over one. We follow this king who has a curse and he doesn't want his people to know that he has this curse and he's really struggling with it and he's trying to like rule his empire in the right way. That is, his empire is also kind of like crumbling around him. I like his POV quite a bit. I find that one really interesting. I enjoy being in it and kind of like learning about like the politics in the world and how his curse, like his curse essentially is magic, how the magic works. I think the magic in this is kind of cool. We have people that can use light or dark magic and it's like chaos energy. I think that's really cool and they can like harness elemental if they use dark energy, but they tend to like go insane when they harness dark energy. So most people harness light energy, but that's less strong. I think that's kind of cool. I also do like Cyrus, who is the first dragon rider that the world has seen in mm -hmm. centuries. He stumbles across a dragon egg. He now has a dragon and the king that we just talked about wants to use him for personal gain which really isn't technically personal because he's trying to make the empire strong again but it feels personal when you're in Cyrus's head. The one I'm struggling a little bit with is Sira. She is the female POV. She just kind of lacks any depth to me right now. She lacks the want to do things at this moment in time but I'm not far in so I'm hoping that will change. Her setting is just not as interesting as the other two in my opinion and we haven't learned a lot in her POV. We spent more time learning about her emotions than like the world around her and I feel like with the males we've spent more time with like the world around them. Sira however holds a weapon called the Demon Killer which is single-handedly responsible for a gigantic massacre and has been lost for thousands of years but somehow now she has it and she is protecting it. There are just like three different POVs. We They're gonna connect at some point, I think. Maybe not in this book because I, as I said, it's gonna be like a nine book series, but I'm excited to see where they all go. I am enjoying the story. Like I think it's a really interesting story. I will say, however, a lot of it is done in exposition. There is a lot of info dumping. It can be hard to follow for the first like 100 pages, but once I got into it, I was really enjoying it. But like the first 100 or so pages was a little bit like in one ear out the other. And I was like rereading things a lot just because it's a lot of exposition. But yeah, I'm excited. It says everyone has a destiny. No one can be trusted, not even the gods. And I'm excited to see what that means and continue reading this. I'm gonna update you around probably like 50%, maybe more like 60%. And then again, at the end of this book is kind of like my game plan. Hi, it's like 11 at night. I'm probably 70% into the blood of the lion right now and I forgot to update you at 50% so I'm doing that now. I just really don't have a lot of thoughts that I haven't said already about this book. I'm still really enjoying it. I think that at times I find the writing a little repetitive and I find it a little bit hard to like sink my teeth in for some reason. Like I get easily distracted while reading but I also am really enjoying where the story is going. I think I prefer two of the POVs still. I still prefer the male POVs to the female POV, but something just interesting just happened to her, so I'm excited to see what happens there. I just like, I can tell this is a setup book, and I think that's kind of the biggest problem with it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because like obviously if you're gonna have a nine book series or a five book series or like something that's like epic fantasy that's gonna span like a lot of big books, your first book does have to be a lot of setup and so I think that's just kind of like the one issue I have with it. It's, it's a setup book which is okay but setup books don't tend to be my favorite books but like also they're just to get me interested in that. This book is doing that so yeah those are my like middles of the book thoughts and I will update you at the end with my final thoughts.
I finished Blood of the Lion last night and I really really enjoyed this story and I'm definitely planning to pick up the second book. I do think that this is like a setup book and so my flaws with it I think are because of that and I'm just so excited to see where the series goes. I'm excited to see how the three POVs eventually connect. I'm excited to see where the plot expands from. If you've read epic fantasy you know how little book one actually tells you about so much that's gonna happen later on and I feel like this is true to this book. However it's setting up the groundwork for the future book. So I do think that this got less marks for me in some categories just because of that but that is almost a fault of the genre that it's in and not the story itself because it just like can't do everything it wants to do in this one book because it is spanning such a long time within all these other books that are going to come. I really really loved the themes in this book. We saw each character struggle with the same themes which I thought was really really interesting because we saw them in different lights. So we saw like religion and fear and how those go hand in hand in all three POVs but we also felt like they were completely different stories and journeys with in that theme. We also saw a theme of like destiny and prophecy and like what becomes of someone that has a destiny and how you can react to your destiny and things like that in all three POVs but they were all done so different and handled so well. I really really did enjoy that. I also just enjoyed the world that we did get. I really wanted a little bit more depth to it but I think as I said that's going to be coming in future books. I wanted to learn more about the magic system. I thought the magic system was really cool. I wanted to learn more about the dragon rider. I thought the dragon Rider was really cool and I did want to learn more about like the dreams our one character was having. I really mostly struggled with one POV in this book over the two others. The female POV, Sira, I just struggled because I felt like she didn't have a lot of like her own personality. I felt like she was very much just like going with the flow and I wanted to her to like insert some dominance a little bit more than she did but that I think is just because that's who I am as a person and I'm not and that's who I want other characters to be but I also think we're gonna see her go on a journey where she becomes a character who is more confident and willing to like do those things instead of just being like a little bit more like meek and just following and gullible and stuff like that. Again I think like a lot of my flaws in this are things that I'm going to love later on as I see the the journey happen. My other one complaint about this book I think is that although slow things happened very fast in my opinion. We'd escalate and then de-escalate a little too quickly for my liking. I wanted to see a little bit more of the moments after something happened where we could really see like the emotions and feel through what just happened especially if it was a traumatic experience. We also have one POV who blacks out for a lot of things and it is part of the story that they block out. However a little pet peeve of mine is just that I would love to see those things because I feel like they were important to our character and I just like love to see those moments. I don't like to be told about them a lot. I would rather like witness them with our character and then feel those emotions and be able to connect to my characters a little bit more because of that. I think a little bit of connection to character issues did happen to me in this but I'm excited to see where the characters all go and to connect with them in future books so like I'm not worried about it for future books but I think it did bring my rating and my score down for this book a little bit. However, I did really enjoy this. I think if you were a fan of epic fantasy, and this book does go a grim at times, if you like a little bit of a darker fantasy, definitely check this one out. I'm very, very excited to see where this story goes. I think it's going to be a really interesting and exciting journey. I'm really interested in the dragon POV too. I mean, I love dragons. People know on my channel I love dragon books, and I felt like this did follow a boy and his dragon type story, but was unique enough and interesting enough that it, it carried me around because I was always like wanting to understand the information a little bit more. There is a little bit of a mystery element to that and I'm really intrigued and I cannot wait to continue. I'm really really happy that I got to read this as a semi-finalist. I definitely definitely enjoyed it. For my scoring for Blood of the Lion, I give characters a 7. I really did like them. I wanted just a little bit more depth and understanding to the characters, but I think we will get that in future books. I gave the plot a 7.5. As I said, this is a setup book, so I feel like there wasn't a lot of plot and I didn't really see where the story necessarily is going to go into like the last 50 pages. However, it's going to span a lot of books, so I think the plot will come into play and I understand why it didn't do that, but yeah. I gave the writing an 8. I do think that it was really, really well done. I saw a little bit of repetition that I didn't love. I do think that it was strong writing. 
and I gave the setting a 7.5. Again, this is one of those things where like I saw moments of the setting and the world building that I really, really loved. However, I just wanted a little bit more of it, but I think we will get more of it in book two. And I gave my enjoyment an eight. I really had a fun time with this book. I definitely will be continuing. And so overall, it got a 7.67 from me. And I'm really excited about that score. I'm really excited to continue in this series. I have now made it to page 130 of The Fires of Time, which is chapter 10. So I have made a decent chunk of this. I'm going to talk quick because I made myself some lunch, which you can't really see. But I made soup dumplings, which are delicious. And then also, I'm going to butcher this, taboki, which is kind of like a Korean matzo stick. So it's a rice cake stuffed with cheese and they're delicious. And then I just drizzled soy sauce, a little bit of lime juice, sriracha mayo, sesame seeds, some cilantro, and some chili oil over top of everything to give it like a good mm, yum taste. I've also made myself an Arnold Palmer for lunch. I wish I could really tell you what this book was about. I am enjoying it, but I am confused. You know when you read a book and there's just so much information coming at you that you're almost like information overload? That's kind of how I feel. I feel like there is a really cool world in this, but there's so much happening and so much about it that I feel like I just haven't grasped it properly. Like the magic system is explained in this a couple times, but I'm still unsure how exactly it works. And it's just because I've been trying to process everything with this book that like little things get lost, I think. So we follow our main character, Kaya, who is a young mage that our other character kidnaps at a young age in order to train her to kill the Wooden King. The character that kidnapped her runs this like city essentially and controls like the magic of the city in order to make it so that Kaya can't leave. Kaya was kidnapped so she obviously doesn't like her like master. She is also friends with this ghost girl that her master doesn't like but allows her to be friends with and there's just like a whole lot of stuff happening and I couldn't tell you where like the direction of the story is actually going besides the fact that Kaya is supposed to like realize her power in order to then destroy the wooden king. And that Kaya is trying to escape throughout this book because she's trying to escape the city that constantly is working against her leaving. Like she'll climb a wall and it like knocks her down or like she'll try to swim out the river but the stream will lead her back. So there is like a magical system that is stopping her, preventing her from leaving that the master runs but then the city also doesn't like the master and there's just like a lot going on that I haven't completely grasped. I think that there's some really cool and unique elements of this, so I'm excited to see how it goes. But at this point in time, like, although the world building is really fun and cool, I kind of wish it was a little bit more concise than it is. Well, it's just like better explained to me. It just, although it is explained, like I can't say it's not explained. I just like don't fully get it because I feel like there's too much happening. The other thing I want to say is that this book does read younger, which I think people automatically think is a negative, but I don't mean it as a negative. I just like to go into books with expectations set and and I know I want something different out of a young adult book than I want out of an adult book. And I think knowing those expectations is a really incredible thing going into a story. I like both YA and adult fantasy, so that's nothing negative against the book. I just wanted to put it out there that it does to me read a little bit younger than some of the other stories I'm typically used to. Our main character is a younger age and she just kind of feels that way. Anyways, that's all my update for now. I will update you later. Hi, I have some thoughts on Fires of Time, so I figured I would update you with them. They're like vibe thoughts. So I'm on chapter 17. I'm listening to the audiobook currently, so I don't know exactly where that is in the book. I want to say it's like 250-ish, so probably about 50% or just under. And what I wanted to come here and talk about is kind of like the tone of this story and how I think it's going to really work for some people because I do think that this story is really well written. Like I do think the writing is super strong in it, but it has a tone that really reminds me of middle grade. There is this feeling in this story for me of like, like good conquering all. We're watching this young character go on an adventure and her belief in friendship is going to conquer over the bad guys. Her belief that like everything turns out okay and that she can do everything she wants to do and if she puts her mind on it she can do it and it's all gonna turn out okay. Just I don't know it just gives me the vibes that like a middle grade story does. The actual like writing style reminds me of small horrors which is a middle grade horror and I don't know, I just like, I get that vibe. I also get fairy tale vibes from it. And I think it's like that same thing of having like your good deeds, your good personality traits conquer all in the end and showing how being a good person will 
move you further in life and I feel like that's just like the style of tone that I get from the story. Now I'm not done the book. It could not go that way. It could end up not being what I think it's going to be. That's just like what I think of like how I feel it feels like at this moment in time which is not a bad thing and I think another way to describe it would probably be a little bit cozy and cozy is obviously taking off right now. I think that that's a really interesting style of story because it is a little bit more epic still. I see Ralph out and about. That's my boyfriend's cat. He's probably waiting for a squirrel. But I feel like I don't see that cozy of a style that often in something that is as grand as this book is. And it does have me excited. It's not my usual taste in a story, but I have been known to enjoy some every once in a while. And so far this is written quite well. At this moment in time, I could easily recommend it to a lot of people. Okay, I finished Fires of Time. I have mixed thoughts on this story and I think that makes it a little bit hard to talk about because I do think that this was really, really, really well written. And if this style of story works for you, I truly think that this book could work for you so much. I do think that if I put this through in the competition, it will do really well. However, I was disappointed with like the overall structure of the story and the plot of the story. I wanted more of a direction of the story like it ends and I feel like not a lot happened in this book for me where I think the plot of the story is just the adventure our character goes on and the growth that she goes through during this adventure but I don't love that style of story I definitely want more of a like goal orientated story where this one person was just kind of like la di da dying through the world and when she faced a conflict she would deal with that conflict but then her adventure would continue and there'd be another conflict but there wasn't like an overall goal to the end of the story I felt like the story really lacked that for me however I know a lot of people love adventure stories like that so I do think that this could work for you it's definitely an adventure story it definitely has a fairy tale vibe to it where it's like more hopeful I never feel like my characters are at risk of anything because of that tone of the story that is just kind of a little bit more everything will be okay as long as you're a good person and you believe. Even though like dark elements do happen within the story, it's just like, it's a tone thing. And again, that's just not a story that works for me as much. I want to feel on the edge of my seat for my characters. I want to believe that they could die at any moment. I want to feel stressed with them. I want to go through all the emotions with them. So like, this is just not a me book, but I get why Brie gave it to me because I told all of my reviewers, I said, give me the best book, not the book that you think I'll like best. And I truly understand why Brie loved this book. Like, I think that this is such a book that would work for, like, that style of reader, just not my style of reader. So, like, I will be recommending this because I think there, there's some really cool elements. The writing is so polished. And I think the world is really interesting and unique. I felt like at times it was a little information overload for my brain because I was trying to pick apart the magic system to understand it a little bit better and I think you're just kind of supposed to accept that this is how things work in this world instead of like understanding how they work but it's so cool I really liked the idea of like the crickers and just like the overall world building I thought some of the magic was cool but I just couldn't connect to this story I think that's just a this is not a me book because I do think that it is really, really, really well written, which makes it so hard to talk about because like, I'm sad I didn't love it. I'm sad that I can't be like, this is going to be my finalist because like, I don't feel those vibes. And I've already read a book in this that like, is stronger for my personal reading taste than this book. And this makes it so hard. Um, the audiobook is also done really good. I really enjoyed it. And I just think this is a good vibe story. Like if you want a good vibe story that is gonna be a little bit fun and adventure and unique, pick this up. But if you're looking for like a more heavy, the discussion held story this might not be it this is the first book in a series though so I'm sure there will be some more direction than this book goes into I think a lot of just like set up and getting to know your characters in this one sadly didn't work for me but I still think it could work for you and for my ratings for fires of time I gave characters a six I struggled a little bit with them I think that they could have been more defined in areas. I think the two girls really ran together and I didn't really understand the motivations of like the mentor enough, which I think is probably part of the problem of not having like a plot because I just felt like I was supposed to be getting to know the characters but I wasn't vibing with them. The plot I gave a six. The writing though I gave a nine. The setting I gave an eight. I thought it was really well done and super unique and then my enjoyment was just a six. I just didn't love my time with this but I still liked it enough. Honestly, a six is still a good score. So this ends up getting a three star from me, which is a 
6.83, which I think will be a 7 on like the Spiffbo rating board if I were to rate it on that. But yeah, there's there's my Fires of Time review. On to another book. I have made it to chapter 14, which is about 120 pages into this. I mean, it's a chunky book, so I'm not super far in, but first impressions, I'm really, really enjoying this. I can't lie, when my team first gave me this book, it was the one I was most scared of, just because I sometimes struggle with, like, magician-style magic systems and things that you're just, like, born with. I'm just more of a logic-driven reader and wanting more, like, logistics to why they have their magic most of the time. However, I'm really, really, really enjoying this one. I mean, I love a school setting. So this book definitely has that going for it. And not every POV is in a school setting, which I really enjoy. In this world, I'm putting this down because it's so chunky. In this story, we're following a world where at your 13th birthday, you are tested for what magic you have. Pretty much everybody in this world does have some sort of magic, just depends how strong they're going to be with it. And families kind of breed stronger magic, which I thought was really fun and really interesting. I thought it added a element to the magic system that made it a little bit more logical for me. However, we're following one character who comes from a very, very strong bloodline, who ends up being void of magic. This is a rarity and this does not happen very often and if you are void of magic you are really really looked down upon and you really can't do anything in this world. You're useless because why would you hire someone who can't use the magic when other people can use magic to like help cook or do things like that. It's like some magics will help you like garden just because of like your ability makes the plants grow better so you wouldn't ask a person void of magic to grow your garden because it'll grow better with someone who has that ability which I thought was really interesting we're also following his brother who was at the magical school I thought that was cool we're following a character who is trying to get to this magical school and at this point in time I don't really know where the actual arc of the story is going but it's a big boy I think it's just gonna be a coming-of-age story and we're gonna follow these characters as they learn a lot about themselves and I really am enjoying it I can't wait to read more so I just wanted to give that update and I will update you again in a bit I am just over 50% into Master of the Void. I have made a really big dent in this, page 338, and I am honestly really, really enjoying this book. I think it is a whole lot of fun. It is just like the perfect coming of age story that is following these young boys as they go on a journey of self-discovery of who they am, but there's also just like this fascinating magic system happening and fascinating conflict with the world that we're watching like unravel before us because essentially there is someone coming and kidnapping one of the mage types and we're following characters who are this mage type and their father was taken and they're trying to find their father, but they're also going through things that teenagers boys go through so there's like crushes and like it's just is like a very well written coming of age story in my opinion and we're also just like seeing characters struggle with like power corrupting as well as the idea of who they're going to be like we're seeing these young kids struggle with people older than them influencing their decision and making them someone they're not but making them think that maybe they do want to be this person when like they shouldn't and I just I'm really really eating this story up I'm having a really good time the actual like premise of the story is definitely like you're just like classic coming of age story it's not it's not splitting away from that like typical trope but I think the world and the magic system is really cool and unique and I'm loving it I will say like I, I kind of predicted where the plot was going to go quite early on but I'm still having an amazing time on the journey that I'm on. The other thing I will say is like the characters aren't the best. I'm loving the characters like I am rooting for them. I'm adoring them. There's like a little romance that I'm like rooting for so much but writing styles it is sometimes hard to differentiate the different personalities of the boys. They do sound quite alike but they're going through different things and they have different situations around them that I'm never confused whose POV I'm in but if their situations weren't so different I probably would be more confused but it's like really easy to tell whose POV we're in just because of like where we are in the world and what we're dealing with but like personality wise kind of still alike and so I think it would lose a little bit on characters for me in the end but like I'm really 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 liking this I'm gonna keep reading
I finished Master of the Void and I honestly had a really fun time with this book. I have a hard job. Like my team did too good and gave me too many incredible books that how am I supposed to pick a finalist out of this? This was so much fun in my opinion. I just felt carried along with the story the entire time. I just was always interested to know what the next step in the kids journeys was going to be, what the next coming of age revelation was going to be, the like mystery that was happening and even though I suspect a lot of it I was like always turning the page intrigued to get to the reveal where my predictions would be either proven real or proven false and it just really was a page turner for me it was a long book but it didn't feel this long because I like really did enjoy my time with everything a lot goes down in this book we go on a really long journey with our characters like we we go through a lot of time in this we see them grow up quite a bit and we also learn a lot about the world the magic system the different politics some of the different cultures and i had a lot of fun with that there's a culture in this that i thought was so interesting we have characters struggle with their identities at time which i really enjoyed because that feels like such a coming of age story it's something we can all relate to struggling with who we're supposed to be versus who we are and like what's expected of us and I just like thought this was such a amazing incredible story about friendship and I really really had a great time with it. Yes I do think that the character work could have had a little bit more definition like at times it was hard to like tell the characters apart however I loved the characters like I literally loved the characters so much. Aaron has my heart and I'm rooting for him. I do know in Sandra's review she does talk a little bit about the relationship that happens in this book because we do have a character who is promised to another for a political marriage. This character is 14 or 15 and she's promised to another character who I think is around 17 maybe 18 and they talk about her being too young but I think it was handled really 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 well and the age gap never bothered me because we are in a fantasy setting where those things are more expected and make sense when you think about how fantasy worlds kind of worked and how historical settings do work and I think it was handled really well by our characters where lines were not crossed and they were really trying to let the younger character find herself and not be swept away by this like relationship that she's in like the older character was so responsible and mature about it and I think it was handled really really well and I mean as someone who dated older than me and younger than me really two years is not that big of a deal in my opinion and I think that he was really respectful and it did not bother me at all but I just did want to like say that it is in there but I didn't think that it was an issue at all they do mention quite a bit that she is younger but I think that's in order to like also understand maybe why the relationship isn't moving the way that you would assume a relationship would with characters feeling the way that they feel and I just I really like this I cannot wait for book two like I want book two ASAP I will be trying to get my hands on it as soon as it comes out I want to read it I'm so obsessed with this world these characters I need to know what's happening next and for my ratings for this I did give characters a 7.5 I gave the plot a 9 I gave the writing an 8.5 I do think it was strong but we did have a little bit of like repetition at times like this book probably could have been a little bit shorter I gave the setting a 9 I loved the setting and I gave my enjoyment a 9 which ends up with an 8.67 as the score yeah that's that's my rating i've started a sword of mercy and wrath i'm about 120 pages in i've made it to like volume two so far i am enjoying it this follows our two characters tristan and celine they grew up together and tristan ends up leaving to go save celine from like the big bad that is their father now they're not actually siblings in this but celine is like a ward to their father and Tristan just wants to like save his mother and Celine from the abuse of their father. This is a grim dark fantasy. But while Tristan's gone, Celine ends up going through a demon attack, which is a werewolf. And she survives this. It's traumatic and she ends up joining the Golden Sword Knights and she trains to be a knight. I think that eventually they are going to meet up in this story and we're going to see how their mindsets have changed because they've been gone for so many years and haven't seen each other and how much people grow up part during that. Celine also does have a disability. I do think that her disability is portrayed quite well so far. There is like an author's note at the beginning of this talking about how it is grimdark. We are going to see the darker sides of humanity and that it's not just to shock you but it's to see what people are capable of and what people can actually do but also to then see these moments of goodness within a character when there is only bad around them. 
I am enjoying it. My only issue right now with the story is I think it moves a little too fast. It is quite short for like my personal taste and I've just noticed the scenes move really quickly, the writing moves really quickly and I wish I was spending a little bit more time like with my characters learning these moments with them and getting to know them instead of like rushing through their lives and that is really my only complaint right now and so far like I am enjoying the story and where we're taking it. I have made it to page 200 and I'm definitely struggling a little bit with this one. I really really wanted to love this and I do think that the story is really cool and unique. I haven't really seen this kind of like paranormal fantasy done in a non-romantic way. So I'm enjoying that part of it with like the werewolves and stuff. However, I'm just struggling so much with the characters. I feel like I'm missing so much definition from them and that's because we're missing time with them. For example, our main character, Celine, she starts off really nice and then all of a sudden she's mean. There's a lot of time that had passed. So we do like talk about how like time just like went away with the niceness and now she's definitely like hardened. However, I wish I had seen her become hardened instead of just being like told that. And I feel like that kind of just explains the entire story for me. I just feel like I'm missing a lot of the smaller moments that make me really believe in a character. This is a very fast paced, action packed book. Like pretty much every page is a werewolf battle or a soldier fight or something like that. And I just like, I'm really missing the small character moments that make me love characters. So I'm struggling more about that than anything else. And I think that's just gonna make my enjoyment go down a bit on this book. I do like the world though. I think the world is kind of unique, but I kind of want a little bit more definition even on that. Like I think this is a good book. I just want more out of it at this moment in time. I'm hoping I get there. I'm still like enjoying my time with it but I'm not like obsessed the way I want it to be. I finished The Sword of Mercy and Wrath last night. I didn't love this one and truly just comes down to the fact that I could not connect to the characters and then their journeys that they went on in this world, like in the story, I just felt very distanced from because I didn't connect to them and I didn't really care what was happening to them and I didn't find it like as believable because I couldn't connect. I know that these aren't issues that Kaylee had or Brie had so it's definitely a me thing with this book where it just was like so rushed in my opinion that it left me struggling to like understand the characters and I really like to understand my characters. However, there are a lot of things in this book that I think are done really good. We had werewolves in this high fantasy world and I thought that was really interesting and something I hadn't seen before. It's definitely like a blend of like what you would normally think is paranormal, but in like a fantasy story. I loved the like religious aspects of this. I liked the brainwashing that we could have seen happen. I struggled a little bit because I wanted the brainwashing to have a little bit more intention behind it and depth. I wanted to see our character struggle learning the religion and the brainwashing and then all of a sudden be like brainwashed and then like kind of have a slow come out of it. However, that didn't really happen in my opinion. It was just like very automatic and like I get the concept behind it and I think the ideas behind it were really good. I just kind of struggled a little bit because I would have liked to see the brainwashing take more of effect. And I, I did really like seeing those ideals come to play and like the idea of like having something traumatic happen to you and then having someone use that traumatic experience to their own advantage and making you something and making you believe things due to that trauma and not like really letting you heal properly. I really did like those themes and those discussions. I just kind of struggled a little bit in general with them and I wanted to connect more. I think I just wanted, I wanted a slower book and more from the book. I think I needed a chunkier book than this as I just felt like things were being rushed and I wasn't like getting my time. So like that's really my only issue with it. Plot wise I liked where the plot went. I thought the plot had like a really steady thread and I liked the writing enough. I think that the writing took me a little bit to get used to at the beginning but once I was used to it it like flowed really nicely. But I found the writing sometimes went from like really long sentences to really short sentences and we'd have like a lot of long sentences and then we'd have a lot of short sentences. And I kind of wish that they were just like mixed in a little bit but as I said like as I continued in the story this was something I did not notice anymore but I noticed in like the first 30 pages only. Only. Anyways, this I ended up giving a three star, but let's tell you my actual scoring for it. I ended up giving characters a five. As I said, I really struggled with the characters. The plot was an eight. The writing was a seven. 
The setting I also gave a 7, although I said earlier that I thought it was really unique and cool, I actually still wanted a little bit more from it. I think our focus became the characters and the religion, but I kind of wanted to see a little bit more of like the world in it, if that makes sense, because I did think the world was cool, but I wanted just like a little bit more of it. And then I gave my enjoyment a 6, and then that ended up being a 6.50 for this book. That is my review. I've read all my semi-finalists and it's time for me to pick a finalist and I don't know how I'm gonna do it. My team did me dirty <laughs> and picked the best books possible. Like I thoroughly think all of these books could go far in this competition. I think all of them deserve to be here. I will be recommending all of these books to other people. They should be screamed about from the rooftop. I think that they all show what I love about indie fantasy, which is the creativity and the uniqueness that really comes from indie fantasy. And I feel like every book I pick up in indie fantasy feels like something new and innovative and I just like love it so much. And I think that all of these really, really, really showcase that. There isn't one here that I didn't think was unique in its world building and plot and setting. And I just truly do think that all of these need to be read. If I could pick all five of these, I would, but sadly I'm not allowed to. Just for a little summary for all of you, Pond's Gambit, I really, really enjoy. It had really cool world building. We're following a competition setting. I thought that the Japanese inspiration was really well done. It felt like a very unique story that I had never seen before. I really did like seeing our main character be really smart and have to go complete all of these little competition things and not do it with just like brute force but actually use her brains and I thought that was really really interesting. I did want a little bit more from the magic system. I wanted to learn and understand the immortal techniques more than I did and then I also did struggle a little bit with the characters. I wanted just a little bit more definition from them but overall I really enjoyed this story and I definitely will be reading more from this world because the immortal techniques is a world of standalones and they just all have the same magic system. The Blood of the Lion is a chunky epic fantasy that I had so much fun with and I cannot wait to read book two. This is a epic spanning a lot of books style story and we really spent time with our characters and we did have some really really cool world building. I thought the magic in this was super cool. However again I struggled just a little bit with my characters and a little bit with pacing and I just wanted more information. I think a lot of my problems with this book were that it is a setup book setting up a nine book series so we don't get a lot of answers in the story and I think we will as the story continues on and the plot is just being set up. We don't see a lot of the plot in this because it will be coming in future books. However, I cannot wait to get my hands on book two. I think that this is just like epic fantasy done so well and I cannot wait to continue. It does lean a little bit more grim at times and I think the writing was really strong with the three POVs really functioning well together and apart and I cannot wait to see how they all connect but they really flattered each other. The Fires of Time by Alexander Wyatt was a really really unique story. I know I'm saying unique over and over again but that is what I love about indie fantasy and I feel like I need to scream that from the rooftops. I think I've never seen a story quite like this that I thought was so cool. I definitely think that this will be a really big of a hit for people who love a little bit more of a cozy story, a fairy tale style, a middle grade style. I, I definitely feel like this made me feel like being a good person meant that you could conquer all and that we were spreading good messages throughout this story. I think that the magic system in this was, again, really cool. I did want, again, a little bit more definition from the characters and I wanted a little bit more plot as I feel like this was like a good vibe story, not really about the plot itself. I wanted a little bit more direction to the story. However, I really enjoyed this one as well and I think I will be recommending it to a lot of people. And then we have Master of Void, which is a coming of age story and I really, really loved the characters in this. Although I did want a little bit more definition from them, I loved them with my heart. I did want to see a little bit more personality to them because they could run together a few times, but I loved them all and was rooting for them so much. I also think the magic in this was so cool and the story overall, the concept of it was something I'd never seen before. Again, just like super unique and I really had a fun time with this. I loved the journey all our characters went on. I loved seeing them progress. I really, really think that this is great for fans of a coming of age story. In some ways it reminds me of like a YA Wheel of Time. I don't think that anyone ever says that this book is YA and I don't know if I can actually tell you it is, but it does follow like a lot of younger characters. But just like the idea of these characters setting off on a journey and their destiny and like growing just reminds me of that coming of age story that Wheel of Time really is. I flew through this. It's a chunky book but it was fast paced and I feel like lots of things were always happening and I was always learning new stuff and very interested in everything that happened. Again though I just wanted a little bit more definition in the characters. That seems to be a really big thing that I want out of, fan out of my fantasies, especially in the indie fantasies. 
And then last we have Sword of Mercy and Wrath by N.C. Kusis. I thought that this was again such a unique world. We have werewolves in a high fantasy setting. Like this feels like it should be like a paranormal fantasy but it is it feels like high epic fantasy still and I really 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 enjoyed that idea and that concept. I liked the ideas and the themes we have on religion on this. However I just wanted it to slow down at parts. I wanted to spend more moments with our characters so I could connect more to them. I really struggled to connect to the characters in this one but I thought the plot was so interesting and really cool and I definitely will be recommending this especially to fans of like a grim dark story or a faster paced story. Definitely will. There we have it. Those are all my like brief thoughts on the five books just to remind you all and um, I don't know what to do now. I'm gonna drink my coffee because I don't know what to do. Mark Lawrence, why do you have to make me choose? <laughs> why can't I pick them all? Next year, five finalists from Covers with Cassidy. It's coming your way. I truly do think that all of these belong in the finals. This is so hard. I think for me, although I think that these were both really, really well written stories, I think if you watched my reviews, you could tell that I didn't love them as much as the three other books. So I will say like, please pick these up, especially if anything in what I said sounded interesting to you, please pick them up. They were well written. I, I like think that they both could go far in this competition. However, for my personal style in story, these weren't the best books I had, but I, I really want others to read them. Like definitely do not be swayed. I would love to see it videos of people just reading my semi-finalists. Like, please vlog just reading covers with Cassidy's semi-finalists and read them all and tell me which one you would have picked. I think that would be so cool to see. So both of these, I think, sadly will be cut from the competition. I really enjoyed my time with them. Thank you so much to the authors who put their books out for us to review and read. I truly hope that more readers pick these up. Which leaves these three chunkers. Obviously, if you watch the rest of the book, you know that these two books really tied in in their scores. So Blood of the Lion will be my next cut. I had so much fun with this story, but I think it just being this epic fantasy that took me a little bit of time to get into is really what stopped it from being a five-star first book in a series, but I'm predicting five stars from later on in this series. I'm predicting that this is going to be a series I'm going to love and enjoy, but for this competition, I do think I need to cut it. However, please, please pick this up. I will be reading the rest of the books. I will be continuing on in this world. I think it's so cool, so unique. Thank you again to the author for putting your book on the line for us to read. I definitely found a new series, a new world that I'm excited to dive back into. Which leaves these two big boys who scored the exact same score from me. They both scored an 8.67, which is the exact same score, but they scored for different reasons. I think Rob J. Hayes is just truly a masterful writer. I think that I will continue to read everything that he ever puts out. He writes a story like no one else, in my opinion. Like, they're so unique and so engaging. And Master of the Void by Wend Raven, I couldn't believe this was a debut. I was so addicted to this story and the plot line and, like, the characters, and I just, like, lost myself in this story. So which one do I pick? I think in the end, I'm going to pick the one that had my higher enjoyment score, which ended up being Master of the Void by Wend Raven. I just had so much fun with this story. It got a higher enjoyment score from me, and I feel like that's why I want to push it on further into this competition as a finalist. I think that I would love to see more people read this. I would love to see more people fall in love with these characters the way I did, fall in love with the world and the story. I truly had such a fun experience reading this one, and obviously it got picked by two of my team members as a semi-final list and so I think that says a lot. I really do hope that other people enjoy this. Also like this cover is incredible. Like I'm obsessed with this cover. I would like this printed on my wall and hung up. I will be pushing Master of the Void to be the finalist for covers with Cassidy. However, we sometimes have multiple books that we love and adore and I had five books in here that I loved and adored. I cannot pick them all but I am offering up Pond's Gambit as a Senlin safety net in this competition. If you're new to Spiffbo, what this means is that this book is going to the void of the Senlin safety net. If any other blogger wants to pick it up and read it, they can add it essentially to like their allocations and choose to pick this as a finalist over their 30 books because I'm saying that this book is great and deserves to be in this competition. I truly do think that this book deserves to be in this competition. I think it could go so far in this competition. It was so hard to pick between these two. I have been sitting on this for days, like which one am I going to pick? And I knew whatever one I picked, the other one was becoming the Sentinel Safety Net and I just like couldn't resist 
shouting out into the void about it. Yeah, um, I hope another team picks it up. I hope another team loves it because I truly did love this story and I definitely will be reading Never Die and Spirits of Vengeance and honestly everything else by Rob J. Hayes. He's an incredible author. He wrote one of my favorite series. So yeah, definitely throwing this out there for the other teams as a Sendland safety net. Yeah. Um, also I forgot to say what this scored because it did score an 8.67 and I've decided I'll be going to the closest 0.5 for all of my ratings. So this will score an 8.5 from Covers with Cassidy in the finalist board. So I will let Mark Lawrence know that. And there we go. We have our finalist and our Sunland Safety Net, which both scored an 8.5 from me. So <laughs> incredible, 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 incredible books this year. Thank you so much to Mark Lawrence and every other blog for being a part of this and having me a part of this. It's been truly incredible. I will be signing off from Smith 09 Duties until the rest of the finalists are announced and then come December I will be reading all nine other finalists and giving you my scores for them. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So excited. So thank you again for all the authors who put their books into this competition, took time out of their day to read our reviews, to watch our videos. It truly is an incredible community to be a part of and I will never stop shouting about indie books because there are so many truly incredible ones. As I said, I would love to see any videos where you read any of the books from my team. If you are a booktuber, please make sure to tag me. I love just seeing indie books spread. So yeah, I'll see you soon. Um, and if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me some kind of star emoji because there's stars all over this and the magic system revolves around stars in this story. And then if you want to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstore, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon, all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely incredible day.